Hey what's up guys and girls and welcome back to Savage Gaming and another tutorial in 7 days to die and today I'm going to give you a somewhat of an advanced wiring tutorial in this game so first thing I am going to show you guys is a distance uh, wiring distances so what I've done here is I've just numbered some blocks here this is obviously up to block 13 and I've done some color coding there so you'll see here this is a normal relay a generator bank and a battery bank and all of these the max distance they can run is 12 blocks you know that's from block 1 up to block 12 um, these red ones it just won't connect that distance it won't go that far so here you can see what I've done here as well so if I've got a relay here on sort of block 0 um, this will connect all the way up to block number 11 because we've now minus a block and then also you can have it on the side of the wall it still falls within that block so that's sort of the max distance you can run per relay obviously if you want to run further you can run another relay another further 12 uh, blocks and connect it like that to get a longer run for your for your cabling so that's basically your max distance um, the next thing we're going to do talk about here is just some powered doors trigger plates etc and how these actually work so basically if you want to get a powered door so a vault door that opens when you walk uh, when you walk by it uh, you're going to need something to obviously trigger it whether it be a motion sensor or a trigger plate whichever is your fancy and we'll talk about wiring the two ways of wiring a door like this so here we'll just take a wire from the generator bank straight to the one trigger plate then from this trigger plate uh, we're going go to go to the next trigger plate and then from this one straight to the door uh, there we go to the door now the reason we do it this way is because a door can only have one connection running to it so you can't have a cable going from your generator to this plate from this plate to the door and then another one from the generator to this plate and to the door the same as you did on the other side it just won't work because the door can only accept one connection so let's switch on the Jenny quickly and test it out there we go so if we stand on this plate we'll have the door open if we stand off it door will close on this side same thing door will open we'll get off door will close so what you kind of want to do here unless you're just sprinting through the door you might want to just put a little bit of a duration on there so maybe let's say three or four seconds so when you stand on the plate the door stands open we jump off and the door will stay open for a little bit longer trigger it again uh, let's say trigger it and jump off uh, we haven't set this trigger plate. Uh, let's just set it for four seconds. There we go. And now it'll stay open and then close. Right, so that, that's the basic way of wiring up your powered doors. This will work for the, any powered door, uh, powered hatch, or the, uh, the garage door, or the, 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 um, the metal doors as well. The automated ones will work as well. Then the second way of wiring up the powered door is if you want it so that only uh, so but you need both plates triggered at the same time in order to activate it uh, the way you're going to um, do that is you're going to go from your Jenny then we're going to go to the trigger plate from the trigger plate to a relay then from the relay to the other trigger plate and then from this trigger plate straight to the door and now what that will do You'll see now, it kind of think, you kind of think, well, you just basically just did some sort of like a loop. But what we did here is we've now told this door to only open when both plates are triggered. So if I stand here, it won't open. If I stand here, it won't open. Only when both plates are triggered in this configuration will the door open. So, you know, you could have it so that you want, uh, you know, if it's your buddy outside or whatever, I don't know what you would possibly... Uh, use it for but I suppose it'll have its uses at the end of the day. So that's basically that um, Let me switch these jennies off so they don't make so much noise um, That's basically how you're gonna wire your power doors then the next thing we want to look at as well um, is we want to look at the durations and the uh, you know the, the sort of uh, I can explain it the uh, how you want to get your traps to work as well so you might have a situation where you want traps to work 
Do you only want them to work for a, a, a limited amount of time? Um, or you want to run multiple traps at once off one trigger spot. So all you're gonna do whether you use a trigger plate or a motion sensor, um, then you're gonna connect from your trigger plate to your relay or directly to your trap, depending on how your layout is. So we'll go like that. Uh, we'll take from the trigger plate and up to there. And I think you're gonna connect up to four devices uh, from a trigger plate or a motion sensor. So that will give you that sort of uh, freedom there so you can't have too many on but the nice thing is you can you can trigger a couple of devices while uh with your with your trigger, one trigger plate so you don't need multiple trigger plates at the end of the day and then if you get off they will stop then the same thing as Chris said before you can set the power duration so we can set it to 10 seconds uh, when i trigger it and jump off it will still keep powering the device for about 10 seconds you can set that uh, i think up to 60 minutes so you can have a long duration, but if you only want traps working for a certain amount of time, say dart traps or something, then that's a, a, a nice way to utilize your trigger plates for that. Um, and that's basically multiple traps. And then the other thing is the time timer relay. So what this thing does is basically it operates with the date, uh, with the time of day. So let's go and hook this baby up. So we're gonna hook it up to the relay and then we're gonna hook this relay up straight to this light over here so now you see the light is on because the time is 2053 let's make the time 21 that it must come on so you see the light went off and then when it hits 21 our light will come on so that's basically what the the, the re timer relay does and you can set the end time so if you want the, the lights to come on at night time at 20, 22 maybe and then you want it to come on at a different time there we've hit 21 as you can see at the top and our light has come on and that'll stay on until whatever time we've selected at the end time for your timer relay so there you have it guys there's sort of an advanced uh, wiring tutorial for you guys 12 max uh, how to hook up so that the door opens from both sides remember if zombies trigger the plates on either side of this door it will also set it off so if it's going to be like an entrance into your base i would suggest using a motion sensor and setting it to trigger only for yourself not for uh, zombies or anything like that otherwise you can have a stray zombie come there and get straight into your base so just be careful of that something to be mindful of um, also you know using generator banks uh, does cost fuel so you know you need to bear that in mind it does create heat so you can attract screamers with it uh, you could use a battery bank which is a bit quiet as well from a noise perspective um, and then when you've got solar banks that uh, which you only unlock after you've maxed intellect and better barter uh, you can get solar banks and solar panels which will be nice during the day but obviously don't operate at night so just bear that in mind as well guys so anyway guys i hope the video helped you please leave a like if you did uh, please subscribe if you want to see more and as usual i'll see you on the next one cheers